You're very welcome to another episode of the Scaling Your Business podcast. For this episode, we're staying in Dublin, Ireland to be joined by David Kilden. David is the CEO and co-founder of Epion. David, you're very welcome to the show. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for having me on. Good to be here. Delighted to have you. The podcast uh, is focused on three main areas, early influences, challenges, and pivotal moments, providing value to the listeners throughout. So no different with you. You grew up in Dublin. I did. What was life like growing up in Dublin? What part of Dublin did you grow up in? Any favorite memories or standout memories of your time growing up? Yeah, I grew up, I grew up in Dublin. Grew up in, uh, grew up in Dublin 15, out in Castlemock. Um, went, to, went, went to boarding school for, uh, the, for secondary school. So spent a lot of time in County Mead, um, up in a place called Gormanson. Um, met met, met some, some of my longest standing friends are still, uh, there's, a, there's a cohort of us that still kick about together. A lot of them living around different parts of the world between the Middle East and all over Australia, as uh, a lot of uh, my generation uh, did when things went to things went a little little pear shape back in 2009-10. Um, but I also spent a huge amount of time in a place called Giles's Key up in Dundalk. So my mother's from Dundalk, and uh, we have uh, we spent a lot of time in a mobile home up there during the summers. So used to finish school in the early days. We picked you know before I went to boarding school, you'd finish primary school and straight up to the mobile home for the entire uh, the entire summer so uh yeah I spent a huge amount of my childhood up there and again I have a, I have a fantastic circle of friends up there we still go up my parents parents still have a mobile home up there different mobile home than the one we had when we were kids but uh yeah we still go up there and still still hang around so yeah i suppose that's that that's the three areas that i grew up in so that's lock boarding school and joins us key nice influences early influences anyone in your life teacher parents friends acquaintance that you believe had yeah. a impact on who you are today yeah my dad yeah my dad my dad's always been my uh he's always been my idol he's a, a legend um great guy yeah look up to my dad that's the that's 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 the man the man in my life um definitely uh shaped me into the businessman that i am today um he, he ran his own businesses over the years uh in a similar space he's he, he operated as an insurance broker uh in various forms and you know, bought, sold businesses, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, very lucky to have a, a, a very well-rounded business guy in my life that, you know, helped guide me. And still to this day would be a, a business mentor of mine. So, Is that Ned? Nay. 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 Yeah, that's him. There we go. Yeah. He's fr- from, from a generation. His real name is Thomas, but he's called Nay. So, go figure. <laughs> Interesting. You, uh, you spent a year at uh, Dublin Business School doing marketing. What, where, did, where did the interest uh, in that come from? I did. I did two years. Yeah, I did two years. I did a, okay. did a, a national certificate in marketing. Um, yeah, that was actually a, a suggestion by my dad when I when I finished school. I just wanted to go and work. I just wanted to go get a job. Um, I, I I always thought I was going to end up in the insurance world like my dad. Um, so when I finished school, I had a conversation with him, and he just said to me, "Look, you, you, you need to you need to go do something in college, experience the college lifestyle, maybe do a bit of travel, uh, and then when you figure out that you definitely want to get into insurance, then he says, you know." You can go and get a job. And I was like, what do you mean, go get a job? Surely you can give me one. He's like, you'll learn nothing in here with me. He says, go out, check out the world, get a bit of experience and come back to me. So, um, so yeah, so I did two years in Dublin Business School. Uh, again, great, uh, a great two years of my life. Um, I tra- traveled to the States. I lived in, uh, lived in New York for one summer and I did California the following year on the J-1 visa. So, again, some great, great experience and great memories. Nice. Well, long time ago, uh, long time ago though. <laughs> uh, if I was being honest, my my time in college was probably spent mostly in the pub, in the bar, and uh, socialising. My my, so, my, uh, wasn't, my my wasn't that uh, that different. <laughs> <laughs> One of your first roles outside of uh, TBS was a a broker for Hibernian Life. You spent two years there, then a year as a financial consultant for Irish Medical Organisation, and then uh, more than a decade at a uh, Kildon Insurance Group. Um, yeah. Before launching your own business, so my question is: any standout lessons learned from those businesses that give you the ability to hone certain skill sets, key takeaways, build a network? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely yeah. Uh, look, I, I think there's I've I've great business memories from from each of the roles that uh, that, that I had. I mean, um, you know, I, I started my working career um, before before Hibernian, which is now Aviva. I actually did six months in the home insurance uh, department of Allianz. And, um, you know, again, you know, it was 
it's my first real it was my first real job going into a going into a business um you know again just learning how to deal with customers and all that kind of stuff um was was very interesting but yeah going going through my my business career um the Irish Medical Organization was an eye opener uh, that was a real eye opener because I got thrown in the deep end um you know I was a financial advisor working for working for Hibernian uh, which is now Aviva. And I was dealing with customers around life insurance and pensions and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I applied for a job with the Irish Medical Organization and I became a financial advisor to doctors around, around Ireland. So I used to travel. I used to go up on a Monday. I'd, I'd pack shirts and jocks into a bag and throw the boots of the car. And I used to travel around all the hospitals around Ireland. So I disappeared for a couple of days and I'd sit in the doctor's residence in all of the HSE hospitals around the country sitting talking to doctors um, and, you know, helping them apply for mortgages, take out life insurance, talk, talk to them about various different financial stuff. And uh, it, was, it was a real eye opener because you were, you know, life, life as I saw it at the time was, you know, you had a nine to five and that was it. Whereas you were sitting talking to people about, they were trying to buy a house and, you know, they were, they were on hour, hour 36 of their two day shift. Um, you know, and they were dealing with people in, you know, critical care. They were dealing with, it was, it was crazy. You know, you'd be sitting there and their beeper would go off and they'd be like, look, I have to go. And you'd be like, okay, well, I'll, I'll be here when you come back. So the amount of times I'd be sitting in hospitals waiting for doctors to come back to finish paperwork to be able to go on to the next one. So, uh, yeah, it's a really, 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 really interesting and different uh, experience. But it was great. and great memories of it. So, yeah. Definitely taught you patience, if anything, waiting hours. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, back. yeah, 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 yeah. So I've, 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 I've waited from a business perspective as well as being a patient, you know. <laughs> Where did you get the idea or see the gap for your current business, Epion? You might want to explain, first of all, what it is. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I suppose if, if, we, if, we, if, we, if we go back to the, the start of it. So, look, my, my background, I've been working as an insurance broker and an employee benefit uh, consultant. And I've been in that arena for the last uh, the last 20 plus years. Um, I, I, I suppose... Working, working in a in a family business, which was Kidlin Insurances at the time, um, you know, we you were going up against the big guys, you know, and in every industry you've got the market leaders in every in everywhere everywhere you go, and they've got the big brand above the door. So you know, if you're, mm -hmm. you know, if it, it, in our world, if you're the, the Willis Willis Towers Watson or the Aons, the Mercers, you're going in and pitching for business and the size of a the business they were going after, you know. This guy walks in and I don't have a big brand above the door. I've, I'm just me. And I can do the same job as those guys. The service levels from me would probably be better. And the, 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 the cost associated with that service will be a lot less as well because we don't have these huge headquarter offices that I'd have to be paid for. So back in 20, kind of, I suppose, early 2016, I was sitting, I was thinking, kind of going, there has to be a better way to service clients. Technology is definitely the way to engage clients. Um, you know, bringing technology to the table makes more sense. And the mid-market, the, the SME space in Ireland, in my view, is massively undercatered for in the HR and employee benefits technology space because they don't all have massive deep pockets to go and afford to talk to the big guys, the work days, the saps, the oracles of this world. And a lot of the big guys in that HR tech space don't provide anything around benefits technology. So mm. the idea stemmed from actually bringing the HR tech, the benefits technology, combining the two and making a one-stop shop from a technology standpoint for the SME space. So I was doing a lot of business in the UK. I had clients here in Ireland who had a presence in the UK. So we developed a relationship uh, with a company in the UK and Neil Fallon, who's my co-founder of Epion, he was the guy I was dealing with on the ground in London. So I used to travel over and I'd spend a lot of time in the UK. He was looking after my clients over there. It turned out he had clients in the UK who had a presence in Ireland. So we'd end up looking after the, his clients in Ireland. So myself and Neil used to sit, we'd be sitting having a beer at the end of the day. And we used to kind of joke and say, like, look, we, we need to go into business together. Let's open something up over here. Let's go into business together and let's take over the world. You know, let's start in Ireland, the UK and go further afield. Then the technology conversation came about and we started to talk about it. And we had met our third co-founder, a guy called uh, Ernest Legrand, who's actually based in New York. Uh, we'd met Ernest in Singapore a number of years ago. Um, and Ernest is in the tech space. So we approached Ernest and said, look, we, we, we want to set up this business and we'd like you to be part of it. And uh, as they say, the rest is history. Um, 
So we, we, we went out and we launched and uh, currently today we've over 1100 companies using our platform. There's wow. over, tw- there's over 20,000 employees um, of those 1100 firms using the platform. And uh, yeah, things are, th- 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 things are going, things are going okay for us at the minute. Um, Congrats. Better than okay. They're going good. Um, Congrats. Yeah, we're, we're operating, operating out of, uh, we're in we've people in Dublin. Uh, we've, we're headquartered in Ireland, uh, out of Dublin, uh, where I'm based. Neil's still based in London. Uh, we have a team mm. of people in London. We have a few more people in Manchester. We also then have uh, two people in Australia. So we opened a, we opened a, an office in Perth back in February of 2020. And um, so perfect timing just for COVID. And uh, we currently have uh, so we have a CEO in Australia. He's based full time in Perth, and we have another uh, gentleman working for us in uh, just north of Sydney, and uh, he's actually an Irish guy, an Irish guy originally from Martin living down in living down in Australia. So um so yeah we're about to we're about to launch in the US in September. Um and uh yeah it's all good. Benefits is something you've you've touched on there and I've watched a couple of clips of you in the past referring to it as uh often known as a company's best kept secret. Um, when you look at companies finances you've said particularly in the US the top three come out as salary uh, employee benefit and rent, although there's not a lot spoken about employee benefits. So um, what are the benefits that companies out there can give their employees, either from a non-big tech company to compete against the big, temp- big tech companies, or just from a broad spectrum of things? You know, I, I know that you've touched on income protection and pension and think people, not a, lot of, not a lot of people are aware of income protection and sometimes doubly protect themselves. So Broadly speaking, what are some of the things that people can do when it comes to benefits to compete with the big giants or the lights of the world? Yeah, look, it's it is difficult to compete with the big guys because of their deep pockets. You know, I mean, when, when companies mm. have, you know, when companies have billions of dollars or billions of euros sitting on deposits, they can they can obviously spend that money um, as they see fit and provide you know incredible Rolls Royce benefits. But smaller companies, they can compete, you know, um, life insurance, income protection, pension, health insurance, um, you know, they're, they're a couple of the key components of, 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 of a benefits offering. But there's, there, there's a lot more that they can do. You know, there's, there are other benefits that they can provide, um, you know, pre-COVID, was, you know, some offices provide lunch, you know, so if you're in the office on a certain day of the week or a certain day of the month, company would pay for your lunch you'd get a you get an email in the morning you click on a link and you go in and you'd order what you want company pay for it to be delivered um some companies still provide that to employees at home they give them they give them vouchers for some of the you know for some of the uh, the, the platforms out there the uber eats the deliveries of the world um you know but to compete with the big guys it's i, I think it's more to do with the, the, the there's there are other benefits and you know everyone when we talk about benefits in ireland it's specifically in Ireland, everyone just thinks of health insurance, life insurance, income protection and health care. Um, you know, there are other benefits like additional time off. And there's also share, you know, share option schemes for employees, depending on the size of the company, depending on where the company is on its journey. Um, you know, share option schemes can also be a good, can, can also be a great benefit as well. Um, you know, and we've, we, we've all heard the stories of, you know, people working for the large tech firms and as soon as they float in the stock exchange, all of a sudden Ireland gets, you know, a handful of additional millionaires and a couple of other people who put a lot of money in their back pocket. And that's great. And it's, it's great for the economy as well, because, you know, and it probably creates a lot of loyalty as well. Well, depending on how much money they get, it creates a lot of loyalty around that, uh, the, the employee journey within that organization. You know, if you're working for a company and the company, you know, fills your bank account with a lot of money and you've got financial independence, you're probably going to hang around for a little bit longer, uh, depending on where you are with your own life journey, I suppose. Um, so yeah, look, there's there's there, there, there's a huge uh, variety of other benefits out there. You know, again, pre-COVID, like a gym membership, paying for you know paying for golf club membership and stuff like that. So there's a lot of other benefits that are available out there. Uh, the one for all vouchers, another good one. You know, and a lot of companies aren't aware of this. You know, employers in Ireland can give up to five hundred euros tax free to every single employee that work works for them, and it doesn't have to be five hundred euros. It could be two hundred. It could be a hundred. It could be fifty. But they can do that, and it's tax free. So again, that's a great benefit to, to, to give to people, um, you know. So yeah, there's a there's a, there's a huge a huge array of benefits out there. Of course, it always boils down to affordability. One thing, you know, and I suppose you you, you touched on it there. One thing that I've I've mentioned in the past is companies in Ireland globally 
they spend a huge amount of money on employee benefits and they don't make enough noise about it. Mm. You know, I mean, if you provide, if you, if you only provide basics, if you only provide life cover and income protection, you know, in, in, the, in, in that employee's hour of need, whether they're alive or dead, there's benefits that could be payable there. And mm. I've, seen, I've seen that where we're going out. To, I've, I've met families where we've, we've presented a check to them. This is back before the whole electronic fund transfer piece, you know, became the, the standard. But where we've actually presented a check to someone who's lost a loved one through debt, obviously while employed by somebody, there's a couple of hundred grand being paid across. And I know money doesn't bring people back and money doesn't, you know, money doesn't make it better, but it makes it easier. So mm-hmm. as an employer providing a benefit like that, or the other extreme is somebody getting sick. So somebody coming in and working for you as a, as a business, getting sick, maybe spending a huge amount of time in hospital, the company can't afford to pay them. If, well, sorry, depending on where the company's at financially, they might not be able to afford to pay that individual a continual salary for a period of time. So an income protection benefit would kick in and that income protection benefit could pay them until retirement age. It could also contribute into their pension. It's a huge benefit, you know, it's massive. And, you know, okay, a, a lot of us will never have the needs to claim, but people do die and people do get sick. And it's vitally important that protection is in place to look after them. And as an employer, that's one thing that you can do. And it's re- it, uh, by, by, percentage, by a, a percentage representation of an overall payroll, it's not that expensive. Mm. Not to take away or divert from the, the seriousness of that topic, you've spoken about uh, paternity leave as, as another benefit, and I never heard of this until you said it on a radio show recently. Yeah, so paternity leave, paternity leave is, the, is, is, is additional annual leave to care for your pet. So that could be a visit to the vet. It could be to do with a bereavement around losing a pet. Uh, we see, we've seen a number of companies actually provide that. Um, again, it could be one or two days additional leave that they that they throw in there. Um, you know, there's other things like sock subscription or magazine subscription or, you know, the ability to download certain apps. You know, they'll pay for subscriptions around mind, mm. mindfulness apps, you know, sleep, calmly, all these type of things. There's, there's, there's a lot of those out there. Um, so, yeah, so there's, there, there, there's, you know, I suppose employers during COVID just got a little bit creative and said, what additional benefits can we bring to the employees while they're working from home? Um, and they, they were some of the ones that, they were some of the ones that were a bit topical. The mobile workforce is something that has existed for more than a decade, but is it something you're seeing more of now? Uh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you, you think about your, you know, you just take, take, take Little Ireland, you know, Ireland with a population of you know just over five million people, and all of a sudden you know, COVID has made businesses actually wake up to the fact that you can actually hire somebody anywhere to do to to do a role that you need to fill. So, you know, instead of kind of going well, we can access a pool of talent of three hundred million people or whatever the number is in Europe. You've got the ability to hire somebody, and you know you don't necessarily need them to move to the island of Ireland to work for you. They can they can work anywhere. Uh, obviously, a, a word of warning, there are tax implications in doing something like that. So it is vitally important that you do research it. Again, that's something we can put people in touch with if they were looking at hiring a remote workforce in various locations around the world. Um, they, they, can sp- they can speak to a, um, a, a PEO, which is a, a, it's, it's an, it's an employment outsourcing uh, facility. And they can do that around the world. So, you know, again, yeah, the mobile workforce, um, you know, it's definitely here to stay. Um, it does make sense. And, you know, and, and it gives people freedoms. I mean, if you if you don't need to be physically present to do a job and you decide to move to the Canary Islands, for example, to live a, a sunnier lifestyle, you can do your job remotely and you need to turn up nine to five Irish time. It's not a, it's not a, big, it's not a big deal. Mm. Is there a... Um... Actually, I wasn't going to ask this, and I can edit it out if you don't have an answer for it, but I know that you're a lover of all things tech, and I'm a, I have shiny object syndrome, so I buy random things sometimes when I don't even need them. Um, is, is, there a, is there a latest gadget or piece of technology that you've bought that you've fallen in love with? Um, I, I've, I've built a piece of technology that I've fallen in love with, and that, that, that is Epion. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's you know, if... It, you know, going back to 2016, when we decided to embark on the journey, you know, the vision in my head, and quite a visual person, um, when I was thinking in my head what this was going to look like, I 
I never imagined that it would become the animal and the beast that it is today. Mm. It's, uh, it's, it's incredible. You know, it genuinely is incredible. And I know that's, that's obviously I'm biased because it's, it's something that we built and it's ours, but I am, I have, I've, I've, I have fallen in love with it. It's, it's incredible. It's so powerful. So powerful. How do you raise brand awareness and get the name of the company out there? Is there, is it referrals, uh, networking, marketing, just picking up the phone and cold calling in the early days? What was it that you did to lift up the brand to get it to 1100? All, all of, all of that, uh, Rian. And unfortunately I don't have a, I don't have the, 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 the silver bullet. Mm-hmm. Um, to, to pass my wisdom on to anybody else. It's, it's hard graft. It's, it's drinking an awful lot of coffee, um, making phone calls and just, just never giving up. You know I mean? Any, anyone who's worked in a sales environment, you know, you're, you're going to get the door closed in your face so many times. You just gotta, you just gotta keep going. Um, you know, LinkedIn, uh, link, LinkedIn is something that I swear by. Um, now I know it's, it, it has got busier because of COVID more and more people are trying to sell through LinkedIn. So it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a noisier place. Um, you know, but some, some of the biggest partnership deals that we did were done through LinkedIn, you know, me sending random messages to people saying, how's it going? I'd like to tell you about something we're doing and you jump on a call and they'd either introduce you to somebody or they'd, they'd, they'd take on the, 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 the platform and they'd end up talking to you. And uh, yeah, I mean, look, it's, it, it's an everyday struggle for every business. I mean, we still haven't got it right. You know, there's no, no question or doubt about it. Um, there's a lot that we can still do uh, that we need to do to bring our business to the next level. Uh, you know, brand awareness is huge. Um, you know, connecting with people, networking, all that kind of stuff. And it definitely got turned on its head. I, I would consider myself quite a good networker. Um, I would I would be, I'm, I would say I'm globally connected. Um, and that's because yeah. of my, insur- my insurance and, and, and employee benefits hat. Um, we're part of an organization called Brokers Link, uh, which means that we have represented, we have representing partners in over 120 countries around the world um you know even even this morning i did, I did a call with the philippines this morning with a very good friend of mine uh, called Mau, uh, maui garcia uh, he's the he's a director of a company called trinity insurances out of manila and we're working with those guys to help a client of ours in ireland who has a presence in manila uh, with their benefit structure wow. so you know so the, the the ability to connect with people and the ability to kind of leverage that connection is, is something that i would say is is probably a good strong point of mine um so yeah networking what's you know, your favorite part it's changed what's your favorite part of running the business uh dealing with customers de- 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 dealing with customers and you know and the, and the challenges it, it presents on a daily basis um you know, don't get me wrong. It's it hasn't all been plain sailing. You know, there's like like everybody in business. There's there's you know there's lots of war stories which we won't get into today. But you know, there's it's it's been exciting. Um, it's you know, I suppose anyone who's been on the entrepreneurial journey can tell you. I mean, you can have co-founders around you. It can it can be a lonely place. Mm-hmm. Um, you you do often ask yourself, you know, why am I doing this? And then you realize because you love it. It's great. Um, you know, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, the, the journey's interesting and, you know, our journey is still very young. So we're, we're hoping for, we're hoping for great things. We're hoping for global, global domination. We're, we're aim, aiming for the stars. And if we land on the clouds, we'd be happy. I love it. Three questions left for you. Yep. For our US listeners, what I'm about to say is in reference to high school, but for our Irish and UK listeners, it's secondary school. If you had the final decision-making authority and power to add one subject that's currently not on the curriculum for secondary school students, what would it be and why? <laughs> financial planning. I mean, financial planning. I mean, they, they, you know, when I left school, like, you know, okay, I knew what a credit card was because, you know, I witnessed my parents using them. Mm. no idea i didn't understand them didn't know what a mortgage was you know you like <laughs> life skills you know i mean simple life skills around financial planning should be taught in schools and taught pro- properly um and it should be mandatory it should be mandatory because you know again if people make decisions early in life things can move things can be an awful lot easier and a lot better you know one example give me one example of it please you know like life insurance so a lot a lot of people you know they finish school they go to college they get a job they're young, free, and single. They know that they've nobody looking at them. They're you know they're not married. They don't have kids. They don't have a partner. They don't have any responsibilities other than to look after themselves. And if they were to die, it would be a very sad event. However, there's probably not much left behind that needs to be taken care of. But as you get older, and as you do mature into having a partner, maybe having a family because not everyone has a family. 
responsibility and having responsibility. Life cover is extremely cheap when you're young and, and you're fit and healthy. And mm-hmm. you, you never know what's coming around the corner. You get diagnosed with, with ailments and True. illnesses that they're not going to kill you, but they're going to they're gonna inhibit your ability to get life insurance. People should take out life. I'm a huge believer in life insurance. It's, it's, a, it's a huge benefit uh, that you can look after yourself. And it means that you can set yourself up, you know, so that you can, you know, look after your loved ones when you do pass away and they can tidy up what's left behind. So, you know, simple things like that should be taught in school so that kids understand what is available out there for them when they finish school. Couldn't agree more. Talking about loved ones, um, they're all safe, but your house is burning down and you can only save one item. What one item would that be? I'm, I'm assuming uh, when you talk about the loved ones, the dog falls into that category as well. The he's, dog he, falls he, into that category. He's, he, he's already out there. Uh, can, say, can save one item. Um... I'm, I'm, I'm going to say my phone. Um, okay. I, 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 I can work from, I, I can survive with just my phone in my hand. So I, can, I, can pay, I can pay my bills, I can access the bank, I can mm-hmm. buy food, I can buy clothes. Um, I'd hate to see my house burn down, but yeah, look, we'd be, we'd be fine. Just my phone. It's amazing what you can do on your phone nowadays. Um, final question for you is I'd like you to imagine we're talking as if it's the now, now of the year 2030 and you're looking back on the last decade. Um, you can answer this personally, professionally, a combination of both. What would you like to be looking back on? Um, I'd like to be looking back on a uh, on a success story of my my career, uh, my my business. You know, and and it's it, it's not all about money with me. I mean, look, yeah, of course, you know, my bank account would never refuse money, but it's not about it's it's not about amassing huge personal wealth. It's it's. It, it's about creating something special. It's about looking after people around me. It's about working together as a team, and it's it's about being successful, but also to be healthy. And um, mm. you know, I'd like I'd like to be looking back in years to come and kind of go, wasn't it great? I mean, you know, create memories. You know, a lot, a lot of people have spoken very negatively about COVID, um, and don't get me wrong, COVID has been an absolute pain in the backside. But a lot of positives from my personal perspective. You know, I brought I dropped my kids to school. I connected my kids from school. I was around. You know, I spent a lot of time with kids. You know, in the early part of COVID, we were all trying to figure out what we were doing. You know, sitting down watching Netflix with my kids where, you know, historically I would have been on airplanes. It could have been across the world. Could have been the US or the UK. Wouldn't have spent as much time with them. And, you know, I've had two, nearly two awesome years of watching my kids grow up and, and, and turn into the little people that they are. So it's, uh, it's, it's been a positive. So in 2030, 2035, my kids will be, uh, will be grown up, fully educated and... Um, hopefully and uh living their own lives so uh yeah financial independence would be great at that stage um but yeah that's that, that, that's what i'd like to see in 2030 2035 so yeah amazing well i i, I hope you get there but for today thanks for being my guest and spending the last 30 35 minutes with me it's been a yeah, pleasure thanks, uh, great to meet you yeah